This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Uh, first of all, welcome back. We missed you last week, and uh, glad that you were getting back into full health, although it wasn't a health thing last week, or you didn't think it was. Um, and I'm looking forward to this conversation because you invoked something that I said about Jesus and practical prayer. Yes, yes. And it's interesting how this is going to go because... I don't know if I laid it out correctly. I talked about the class that we had a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and we were doing, and you were talking about how Jesus lived uh, the practical prayer steps were really the principles of his life that he lived by, and right. you know that's how I I perceive it and understand it. Now, when you take it step by step, however. And I listen to things that people are concerned about and what is you know, called as causing them spiritual indigestion, let's say. It's <laughs> okay. It's between step two and three. Mm -hmm. So you you can let's assume that you understand the unification of yourself with God. You got okay, that. And, and and that's the first step. The recognition is the first step. Right. We recognize then, that God is the infinite creative power. And the second step is when we're in this unification where we identify that because God is all there is, that's what we are. And all that is God is available to us. You finish. That's a, <laughs> okay, just, I'm trying. I, don't want, I just, for anybody who doesn't know the steps, I oh, wanted okay. to make sure we're not shorthanding. Oh, okay, okay. And yes, I'm done. It's all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so great. So then there's the recognition. However... There is something between the unification or recognize our unity with God and the recognition part. Realization, the, the, I'm sorry. The realization, realization part, the affirmation. Real. We're, we're yes. claiming the new experience or the good that we're inviting in. Yeah. Yes. And so I understand that, that that's a toughie. That's a toughie. And I'm thinking that there's something in between mentally in our in our mental experience between the unification and the realization. Because I, I listen to your prayers and you say, turn away from mm -hmm. what you don't want, essentially, and turn to what you do want. Yeah. Now, that sounds fairly simple, but it really isn't. So what gets in the way of that pivot, I think, is what's going on in your head between the step two and step three. Hmm. You mean not really believing that that power is within us and that we can actually create this yeah. new, or have this new experience? Well, yeah, the power, yes, that also. But I, I really thought about this a lot. And what is it that, what else could it be? Because nobody is really going to deny the power of God. You know, right. God or spirit or whatever. God is the greatest thing there ever was and can do anything. And without using all those fancy theological terms, that's it. You know, God is all there is and can do it all. Mm -hmm. Well, why is that not happening with me? Okay, so just pivot away from what you don't want to what you do want. But there's something in there that I think prevents the pivot. And it's... No. Yeah, that's our, our our psychology, our training, whatever is buried down in our belief system that has brought that experience that we don't like, uh, 
happened to us to begin with, it's, it's all still working. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot. It's a oh, lot. Yeah. It's a lifetime. Yeah. And <laughs> it's so much so that it keeps cropping up, like different things. As soon as you get a handle on one, here comes another and another and another. And we, there's sometimes we, you know, we'll use this term, the Jesus complex. So you are thinking that you may be thinking that you're doing good and you're doing what Jesus did when in fact that is not yours to do mm. and what you're doing is bringing about a result that you don't want. Yep. So then you got to go but but recognizing that is is a chore. You know, I don't know how you can make it through this whole thing without a mentor or a teacher. I I don't know how you do that. Because somebody it, it's I think it's just really good to have somebody to help you over those difficult times. For example, you can't make the pivot because you don't think that you're worthy right. or because you uh, you know all the crap is in your life. Like other people don't know, but you know. And so, you know, I asked the question recently, what do you think God is sitting there with a book saying, okay, I would give you this, but what about this, this, and this? And, you know, it's just like really. So <laughs> I think you need somebody to help you pass those kind of moments. Um, I, I completely agree. And that is why spiritual community is really valuable to have other people who are involved in the same techniques and processes and practices who you can share with. Mm, some of it is about technique and how you're doing. Some of it is about prayer support because there's only one mind. So if we're going to be pr praying for uh, Angelo, then it doesn't matter whether it's Angelo doing the praying or me or somebody who's never met him. Uh, it, it's the, we're all using the same one mind. Uh, so being in community is very important. And that's one of the things that, you know, my spiritual community, New Thought Philadelphia, is all about. It's about getting people together in person and online and just having an opportunity to, to dive into the teaching a little bit and to share. The other part of it is study. So there are lots of books and lots of workshops and lots of classes. And when we get ourselves into one of those classes, whether it's a live in-person one, like our Beyond Limits class, which we'll be doing again after the first of the year, or if it's uh, something like the online practical prayer class, where you can just go and, and, and take it at your own pace and learn the steps, it's about going through the process. It's about having a new experience. It's about exposing ourselves to some new possibilities, some, some, some new insights, and then going through it. And of course, having a mentor, having somebody you can work with individually, <clears throat> that's tremendously helpful as well. And that's the other thing that we do um, is the mentoring, which is teaching one-on-one, -on -one, and also a healing prayer practice, doing practical prayer work for somebody else. Because when somebody comes to me and they want a practical prayer for some issue that's in their life is a result of their belief system. I am not carrying their baggage. I don't have their belief system. I have my own belief system. And I know that the good that they're seeking is available. So I can do the prayer for them without their baggage getting in the way. As long as they're willing to accept that new result, then it works. And it's the same process regardless of how we're doing it. So I completely agree with you on the value and importance of a mentor and those other elements. I, I do. And I, I was... <clears throat> I, thank you for for articulating that much better than I than I did. I think what um, I meet people that I think we're all broken in some way. Um, some are are acting out of their brokenness differently than others, and I'm not talking about living a stupid life, you know, um, not being able to embrace the power of God to. Uh, supersede all of the stuff that's in your subconscious mind. That's a big thing to think about, mm -hmm. especially when you don't you don't know it. And um, it, it, the list keeps getting longer uh, in in my experience with folks that have these um, challenges to get over. It's just amazing. I'm, and I'm trying not to be to express bitterness, but it's amazing how this life has deposited so many terrible obstacles in people's way mm -hmm. of experiencing the goodness, the good, 
the goodness of God. It's just, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying yeah. to lighten it up because I was getting a little serious there, but it's so many things that are in the subconscious mind that people aren't aware of. And, you know, you feel like you want to just hold their little face. <laughs> like when they were, you know, my little kids, I just hold their little face and say, look at me when I say this. God is on your side. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, you know, and I just, I just wrote a piece like, do you think God has really got this book you're praying? And he's looking up all these dates and you remember when you did <laughs> such and such and such a thing. And I really, I'm going to borrow from something you said that made me really laugh. Like, that is so egotistic. Oh, that's huge arrogance yeah. to think that God is paying attention to everything that you do. That uh, you do. A, yeah, 14.2 billion light years across this huge galaxy. And God's paying attention to what you're thinking about. Now, and, and I went with that, okay? But then there's the teaching that God, it, this is, God and God is individual and very concerned about you on an individual level. And so you, in perspective of the vast universe, really seems like nothing, but then there's that teaching that you are something. And I'm thinking, okay, all of that's true, but what real difference does this make, right? You stole a candy bar when you were 22, when your doggone knew better. Mm-hmm. You did it. You ate it. Like, what do you, what do you, you can't undo that. Do you think that the God of the universe is looking that up and holding, withholding your tuition or whatever it is that's so, you know what I mean? And it's putting it all in perspective. Yeah. But I think well, it happens there between step two and three. Well, yeah. And the, the big thing that we're all praying for is to get over our belief that we're separate from God. Mm -hmm. And so I'll use your scenario. 22-year-old steals a candy bar, eats it, enjoys it. Suppose, I mean, I'm going to presume that that's the purpose of doing that. So there was that, um, uh, that larceny experience, uh, and then there was the, um, you know, whatever the motivation was for that, and then there was the satisfying experience of eating the candy bar. And then what? Does that make the person a bad person? And... When we get into that value judgment, whether that may, if, if the person who did it thinks that made him a bad person, then it did. Not because the act did it, but because their belief did it. So it's like, oh, I did this thing, I'm a bad person. And how could, I, how could I possibly be one with God? And we use that as a way to convince ourselves of separation. And that makes it a little more difficult to do that unification where it's where we identify that I am a divine and perfect expression of this infinite creative power, and I'm using that creative power to create my life, and I can create something new and wonderful. Because a little voice comes along and says, no, you can't, because you're a bad person. Remember that candy bar? Okay. We don't, to, we don't wait for God to judge us. We, it's an inside job. Okay. So then, and, and I like that. I do. So would this be an incorrect way to proceed with that? Yeah. Okay. So stealing the candy bar was a really you know, bad thing to do. It was, it was pretty S-H-I-T-T-Y. <laughs> okay. You can't undo it. So just don't do S-H-I-T-T-Y stuff anymore. Okay? You, we all know when we're doing something stupid. Right. We all know it. So and just I did don't... I a whole bunch of stupid things when I was in my early 20s. But you're not going to do it again. If That's you, right. But I, I, if I still did it and I think that I'm bad because I did it then, then the belief stays forever even if I stop doing those things anymore. Yeah, I, th I think I'm trying to work around bad and good, and maybe that's something that I'm still struggling with because I don't, I'm not trying to convince you that what you did was okay. Right. I'm simply saying, you're more mature now. You're in a different place, so don't do that anymore. Like, don't hang back there with the person that you are no longer. Right. Where are you now? And th now is all that matters. Mm-hmm. So where are we going with this? You know, let's okay. move forward. Yeah. Um, when somebody else does it, uh, and we carry that that anger with about them, it's resentment. So we have a judgment about what somebody else did, and we carry it, and it, it can affect our life in the future. That's a resentment, <clears throat> and forgiveness is letting 
is getting past the resentments, putting them down. Yeah, that thing happened and it was, it, it did not make me happy at the time, but it's not going to control my life or my relationship or the way I'm going to be living going forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and, and using your example, if I believe that I am, we'll use the word bad uh, or unworthy. If I think that something that I did in my past makes me unworthy of something good happening in my future, that's my belief system. Mm-hmm. And that's that's what I get to battle with. And what we want to do in this teaching is say, regardless of what you did previously, as Carol says, do it differently now and put down the judgment left over from before. For whatever reason, that candy bar disappeared from the counter and wound up in your belly. Um, <laughs> it was It was the best that you could do at the time. Yeah. And you get to forgive that younger version of yourself so that you can let go of the judgment and the resentment about how bad you were and continue life knowing that's not the sort of thing you do anymore. And I think that's important to to just stand in that moment and make a decision. That's the pivot that you talk about. For me it is. It's the pivot. What am I going to think? What's what's my mental state right now? Uh, Am I going to continue looking back and feeling those things? You're certainly welcome to do that. But you're never going to move forward into a different space if you keep doing the same old thing. So how about we try something different? Well, you know, it was bad. Okay, it was bad. All right? It was bad. So it's done. You can't undo it. Don't do that anymore. And thus keep it moving. And Mm -hmm. besides that, people forget, right? (laughs) The candy bar (laughs) may not have been missed. If it was, nobody figured out who did it. I mean, you could just go a thousand different ways. It does not matter with where you're going forward. I think it's, um, and this might be, you know, me being a baby boomer saying that it's a character building thing to acknowledge what has not been appropriate and to say, I need to do something different. I agree. think that that's a good thing. Um, But if you don't ever acknowledge that you need to do something different, how do you grow? Mm -hmm. But you got to grow or you won't move forward to step three, the realization. You you can't realize anything, I don't think. If you don't acknowledge that I'm not doing this anymore, I'm going to do this, or I'm not going to think this, I'm going to think this. Yeah, there are actually uh, times where people are very good at doing prayer and being very successful with practical prayer in one or two or three different areas of their life, and they're completely stumped in a fourth or fifth. And that has to do with what we have in our belief system. Let's take a break, and uh, when we continue, we'll talk um, about—let's talk about the four questions. Is Reverend Bill letting you know that the Practical Prayer for Real Results class is now available on demand? That's right. You can take it at your own pace anytime you want. All the information is at bethelight.com. That's b-the-light.com. You know where to find that stuff. The class is five lessons broken down into 18 modules, and you can take them at whatever pace is comfortable for you. As you work through the process, it starts out with the theory, goes into the practice. There are experiential activities and exercises. And at the end of the program, you will wind up with an understanding of how practical prayer works and a practical prayer for yourself that will work to create transformation in your life. And as you know, it works for everything. Take a look at the class online at bethelight.com. There's a sample lesson so you can see how the class is going to work for you and then dive in. The great news is it's on sale now. You can register and save $20 off of the regular price. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. We're having a wonderful discussion about prayer, and when we get stuck in believing that we are divine enough to actually create something new, or use that creative power to create something new in our lives. And uh, I'm going to go over the four questions, which are wonderful for assisting us with the pivot. But first, I want to say that when I'm working with a client doing prayer, 
on their behalf, if they come in with one thing that's a problem, then we tend to spend a lot of time talking about what the possible things might be in their belief system, in their subconscious, that is causing that problem to come about. If they have two or three or four different things going on in their life, this is a problem, that's a problem, the other one's a problem, it becomes really easy to see what's going on because usually it's one prayer request showing up in three or four different ways. Hmm. So if somebody's having a problem at work and they're having a problem with their relationship and they're having a problem with their kids, then it's like, okay, now it's a relationship and people thing and bring our best selves to it and we get to, 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 to focus in that lane. Uh, and, and really dive down, what do these have in common? Because, you know, back to the basic fundamentals, there's one. And if you get three different perspectives on it, then it's much easier to see what that one is. We'll talk about the four questions. So this is uh, from Robert D. McDonald, uh, a colleague out in California. The first question is, are you happy with the experience of life that you're having now? Yes or no? And if the answer is yes, then you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, keep it up. And if the answer to question one is no, question two is, what experience do you want to be having instead? And that's the invitation for the pivot. Okay, so question num number one, are, are you happy? No, I'm not happy. Okay, I don't really care what it is that's making you unhappy. What will it, <laughs> when you're happy, what will that look like? Mm -hmm. And the third question is, once I have it, how will I know that I have it? And that one is really powerful because if, some, if the person, I want to be happy. Okay, great. You want to be happy. Who doesn't want to be happy? We can do a prayer for you to be happy. How will you know you're happy? You know, for somebody who's, you know, been suffering from burning, itching skin for their entire life, then just waking up one morning and feeling like their skin doesn't itch is delightful. For somebody else, it's like, uh, that's that's what it, it starts with right before I start arguing with my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> once I have it, once I'm happy, once I'm successful, once I'm prosperous, how will I know that I am that thing? And being able to quantify it, you know, very specifically <clears throat> is a wonderful exercise. And we get to determine it's not a dollar figure. You know, it's not, oh, well, I'm, when I'm making $75,000 a year or $150,000 a year or $500,000 a year, that's when I'll be prosperous. It's not what it comes down to because prosperity is a feeling of enoughness. So if my bills are $1,000 a month, then what I need to have is in excess of $1,000 a month and, and, and I'll be okay. Maybe it's $2,000 a month. And if I get $10,000 a month, that's great, except if my expenses go up. So what I'm really going to be praying for, what I really want to be experiencing, the way I'll know that I'm having that new experience is that I will have plenty to pay my bills, to spend, to share, to save, and without the pressure, with the freedom. And it turns from a financial prayer into a, uh, um, into a freedom prayer pretty quickly. Mm. So that's the third question. Once I have it, how will I know that I have it? Quantify the result that we're looking for. And then the fourth one, which is the advanced, uh, the advanced study, is what's keeping me from having it now? And that kind of digs into the question that you had there about, you know, get, getting from that unification step of recognizing that I am one with God and claiming that there's something that I believe to be good that's available to me now. Mm -hmm. I think that that one is, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the, that's the one. I mean, number three, as you were explaining the prosperity and so forth, that's enlightening and it's important. But what's keeping you from having those experiences? Right. Are, you know, Where's the doubt coming from? Yeah. And, and that's what you're calling it, doubt? Um, doubt, disbelief, um, a hidden belief, false belief. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> It shows up in a lot of different ways. You can, you can give it different labels, but it is that inherent disbelief that this process is going to work for me this time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think, <clears throat> I think when I started out and when I thought about bringing this to uh, the, the podcast, I was thinking about the time that 
one might need to spend in that space a little bit. Maybe not during the prayer, um, especially if you do foxhole prayers. I think that's what you called them, mm -hmm. foxhole prayers. Foxhole um, prayers, something bad happens and we dive in and, and do a quick, quick prayer and the rest of the time we forget about it. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> I think the foxhole prayers are, you know, we can talk about them another time because I've had some of those. And I'll say, wait a minute now. Step one, two, I'm cool with one, I'm cool with two. <laughs> Where am I right now? Let me deal with three. But it's that little space in between two and three. Um, mm -hmm. And we can cultivate a relationship with the infinite. I mean, that divine power and presence is within us. And sometimes we're so busy with our mind chatter that we don't notice or we don't pay attention or we think that we're, we've got it going on so we don't need it. And this is... <laughs> this infinite power is infinite and its love is unconditional. So there's nothing that we're going to do that's going to diminish that love. So it's always going to be there and it's always going to be available and, and we will have access to it to the extent that we allow ourselves to. So cultivating a spiritual practice where we practice, where we on a routine basis focus on that divine power and presence and identify that we're that we're one with it it can be in a prayer that's what meditation is mm -hmm. yeah that's shutting up and inviting the infinite to share with us and to be connected with that divine power and presence and allowing that goodness to come about so uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like that when you said allowing that goodness to come about and somebody just popped into my mind and said but why would that it just can't come to me. And the person I'm thinking about is they've got, they've in their mind, they've conjured up so many reasons why they can't possibly ever um, even get the attention of God. Mm. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, so am, is this a, a special person here or are there a lot of people like that? And, um, uh, yeah. Of all people, Henry Ford famously said, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's kind of what it boils down to. Yeah, it, it does. It's like you throw your hand up. Like I have thrown my hands up a couple of times. <laughs> okay, like, listen, what are you going to do? <laughs> you can stay here or, or not, really. It's, it's up to you. Yeah, my my friend Michelle has a, a a foxhole prayer. When things go sideways, she says something, and I'm paraphrasing now. It's something along the lines of, "I I am, I will be grateful to see how God how God solves this problem." I like that one. Mm -hmm. it, because it and by the way, I use that occasionally. You know, I I really want to see God. I want to see how this works out because. Yeah. Uh, It'll be just interesting, and it takes the weight off of me. It's, it's acknowledging the power and presence of God in every way. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sort of like out of it, you know. And I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not going to leave me in this screwed up situation. <laughs> so it really will be a nice story to tell how you work this out. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes there's something for us to do. Sometimes it's not just about watching God work it out. You know, okay, I'm I'm going to step off the, the the field and just watch now. Uh, no, it's still going on, but we don't necessarily have to think up the idea of everything that's mm -hmm. going to happen for us and for other people. Sometimes it's about uh, inviting in that uh, that guidance so that we know what's next to do and what's ours to do, and also what's ours to let go of. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe it's okay to come up with little things that work for you. You know, when my children were small and they were, I have three and they're pretty, they're two years apart. So they were all going through the whatever stages they were going through at the same time. And I would say to them, you know, listen, God is on the mother's side. Okay. God is on my side. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I'd walk away thinking, all right, God, you can speak up any time now. <laughs> Let me know how to I know I have some part in this, but right now I'm not seeing it. You're on my side. Now, that was more for my belief, I think. It, it worked with them. Right? It mm -hmm. stopped them for a moment. But it was me. It was letting me know 
that God is on my side. I can I can chill. And when there's something I need to say or do, I'm going to know it. Yep. Yeah. And how many people do we know of who say God is on my side and not on your side? Yeah, I don't know about the not on your side. Yeah. That's... Well, I mean, if 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 we're reminding ourselves that God is on my side because I'm the one who's in here, mm-hmm. and and understand that everybody else can make exactly the same claim, that's the same as the first two steps of the prayer. There's only one, and I'm part of it, and everyone's part of it. And the reason that I know that I'm part of it is because everyone's part of it. They kind of go hand in glove. That's cool. I think I would not have, and I'm pretty pretty, pretty glad I didn't tell my kids that when they were young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and not you? Yeah. <laughs> no, listen, God is on the mother's side, right? I am here appointed to handle this situation, so you just sit and chill yeah. like, while I go. Because, yeah, in this generation, and they think differently, but it, that's a, <laughs> that's a whole nother story. <laughs> Oh, another thing. Yeah. Let's take another break and then do that prayer on that exquisite guidance and the next perfect steps. Good. Yeah. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. Reverend Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol, here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. Yeah. And a great and we, discussion. It's a wonderful discussion on doubt and doubting God and doubting God within and opening to God and pivoting and four questions. It's, uh, yeah, as my friend Carol says, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot. It is. And that's, I think for me, it's, Like, the practical prayer is amazing. It's just not something to say. It's something we live in, you know. Exactly, exactly. Because the fact of the matter is, if this is true ever, it's true always, that we are creating our lives according to our beliefs. And everything that happens, therefore, is created by that same process. So if it's ever works, it's always working. And that includes all the stuff we label as good or bad or unhappy or fulfilling or miraculous or tragic. It's all that same thing. And once we are understanding that the process is is at work, then we can get ourselves engaged and involved in it uh, in a way that brings around uh, an experience that's uh, more aligned with what we desire. So we're up to prayer time today, and this is one of my favorite prayers. I actually um, do prayers along these lines a lot. Uh, And this is a prayer for divine guidance on the next perfect steps to take and to take them. Because what happens is when we are, (laughs) it's, it's possible to have the infinite tell us exactly what is, what needs to be done and then sit there on the meditation pillow or in our life and not do it. Oh, well, God said these steps need to be taken. If I don't take them or somebody's not taking them, then nothing's going to change. So the prayer is about divine guidance on the next perfect steps and taking them to bring about the good. And I'll get into some detail when we go into that. So let us, let us pray. 
starting by turning our attention to that infinite creative power, that divine presence, that one source of everything that exists everywhere. It's God or nature or spirit or the one. It is the universe. It is the divine. It's the Big Bang. It's the source from which everything flows. In the beginning, there was darkness and void in God. In the beginning, there was the singularity and then the Big Bang. And everything that exists everywhere has exploded and expanded and recombined upon itself from that one. When the infinite said, let there be light, suddenly there was light in a place where there hadn't been no light, that there was only God, darkness, void, and God. So that light is God itself. And everything that followed is God itself, taking individualized, particularized, specific form. Everything is that divine light of love, taking its own form. Everything. Everywhere. Everyone. And knowing that, it is not possible to assume that that divine power and presence, that infinite creative substance and energy, is everywhere in the universe except the three feet around me. It is not possible that any one of us is exceptional to the extent that we're separate from that oneness. So that divine power and presence abides within. That infinite intelligence that knows how to create this manifest universe abides within. That intelligence is the same intelligence with which we think. So I know that in whatever circumstance and situation we are facing, that infinite intelligence is available to guide us, to inform us in our own way with great clarity about the next perfect steps that are ours to take, and then the motivation to take them. We know exactly what is ours to do. We know exactly what is ours to release. And then we do it. We do our part, taking that next perfect step. And then knowing that the next perfect step after that is also revealed. The process of good, of success, of uplift, of harmony, and what we describe as that next great experience is already underway. It's happening now. That good is unfolding uniquely for each of us, but the same process for everyone. That infinite intelligence guiding and directing each of us to our next perfect step. And we take them. And the cycle continues. Onward and upward, bringing more joy, more uplift, more happiness, more contentment, more love, more peace, more vitality, more creativity, more harmony into our experience. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for the wonderful ways that it's showing up. I'm grateful to know that even though it's showing up differently for everyone within the sound of my voice, it is the same process unfolding. It is that one infinite presence sharing itself in new and wonderful ways. And so with gratitude for all of this good, I speak this word and release it into that creative law that creates everything. And I know it is now creating this. This good is already underway. This insight is already happening. This download is already in process. And so this deep feeling of thanks, I speak this word, I let it go, and I know that it is so. And so it is. Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.